good. Welcome back to the Whimsy Soul channel. I'm happy to have you here. Today I'm going to be talking about how I edit my Instagram photos. This has to be one of my most requested videos ever. I get questions all the time about how I edit my Instagram photos. So today I'm going to walk you through editing a couple photos so you can see exactly how I do it and you can do it yourself. Okay, here guys, I have my computer right here. I edit all of my photos in Lightroom. It is very rare that I am editing something on my phone. If I am, it is something that I snapped on my iPhone and then I'm editing usually in the Visco app or sometimes with the presets that is available on an iPhone. Usually though, we take photos with the camera that you just saw. By we, I mean my husband, Robin. Hey Robin, do you wanna come say hi real quick? How's it going? Hey! Robin takes most of the photos for Whimsy Soul, so if you're ever wondering who's behind the camera, he is. Lightroom is like the easiest photo editing system. It's actually super easy, it looks intimidating, but it's not. All right, I have Lightroom up here. So as you can see, CR2, that means raw. We shoot with a Canon, so that's Canon raw. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one because I like this one a whole bunch. We shot this in Palm Springs earlier this year during the Desert X uh, art installation. So as you can see from this photo, we shot it in bright ass daylight. I think it was like noon, maybe like one o'clock when we're shooting these. Uh, normally we don't do that. So normally when we're taking photos, we're taking photos at like sunrise or at golden hour, usually in the shade if we can. We try to avoid direct sunlight when possible, but sometimes you just can't avoid it. Like here we are on a time crunch and we just couldn't come back here when the light was softer. So we had to shoot in the bright daylight. Don't worry, I'll show you how I edited around it. Um, so this right here is the photo I posted to Instagram a couple months ago. Um, same, same shoot, just a slightly different angle. I'm going to recreate that photo for you. Start here. I have it in the develop mode. And then over here I have presets. I'm like a preset junkie. I collect them. So, um, when Creative Market offers presets for free, I'll like download them. Uh, I have a bunch I have bought over time. So these are all presets I either bought or I got for free. So as you can quickly see as I'm scrolling over, every preset makes your photo look different. So it's usually good practice to have like a set collection of presets that you use. I use probably three most often. This kind of just makes sure you have a cohesive grid and a cohesive look so everything looks branded together. For I would say like 90% of the photos that we shoot and post, I'm using the C Portra 160 plus one plus plus plus. <laughs> this one right here. So this is a Visco preset. Unfortunately, I think they stopped selling their Lightroom presets in February of this year. So it's it might not be available on desktop anymore, but it might be available in the app if you want to copy it. Um, I always click the presets first and then I edit the, the settings later. So as you can tell, it's way too bright. So let's see what happens when I make it just a little bit darker. Okay, I'm actually mixing. There we go. And I'm gonna bump the highlights down too. All right, already it's starting to look better. I'm gonna bump the shadows up just a little bit and also the whiteness just a little bit. And I'm, bringing, I'm gonna bring black down just a little bit as well. So as you can see, this is getting to a pretty good point. It looks, even though we shot this in bright daylight, it's not as glaring and bright anymore. So the next thing I usually do is I come down to the presence tab right here. Uh, so normally I bump clarity up just a little bit. It gives it that like stark sharpness, but for portraits and things like swimsuit photos and um, underwear shots and stuff like that, I usually bump it down. That makes it a little softer. It's harder to see on this photo. I'll show you on other ones. So we're going to make that one up a little bit. I want this to be bright and colorful because it's a rainbow. So I'm going to up the vibrance a bit. I'm going to up the saturation just a little bit. Now I'm going to come down here. The color board is something that I live in all the time. This is really important. So as a ginger, um, I always really like to make sure that my hair pops in photos and sometimes the color just gets washed out, especially in bright light. So I really like to hop over to the orange tab right here and bump the saturations up on orange, sometimes making it brighter or darker. So as you can see, this has like a huge difference on what your photo is looking like. Most people are orange skin tones, um, sometimes yellow, depending on your shade of skin. But most of the time you can just hop into the orange and you can really mess with this. So as if I put it all the way down, you can see right here that it looks like I'm really tan. It actually looks like I am not the race that I actually am. So that's a little too much. That's a really good, it's a really good hack if you're trying to look tanner. So I want my hair to pop a little bit more. So I think that is good. Everything's just jumping out at you. 
Next, we're gonna come down to the split toning here. Again, because I am a warm coned person, I really like to add a little bit of warmth to all of our photos just to kind of have that subtle warm feeling. Some people really like an undertone of cool. I really like the undertone of warm. So I'll just kind of put something in orange and then drop the saturation down to maybe like 14%. Just something super subtle, just like a little, a little bit of warmth there. So now this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna sharpen this up a little bit. Um, but as you can notice from the other photo I posted, uh, the sky was pink. So I will say, normally I don't heavily Photoshop images. What you see is what you get. Like I don't Photoshop anything out. I don't airbrush my skin. Uh, I don't make backgrounds closer so it looks like I'm somewhere different. Like I really like to make I like to play with the colors and the brightness of a photo, but it kind of stops there. Just so you know, almost everything on my feed is something that you could go and easily recreate with your own camera. There's nothing special to it. Well, you know, like some influencers, there's there's some influencers I follow who have these beautiful images, like travel influencers especially, and then I'll go to that spot and I realized, oh, like they sliced two images together and they brought that background so it looks closer and more impressive. And I feel like that's cheating. I don't like it. It just makes everyone feel let down when they go to that place and they realize that they can't get that same photo. It's super misleading in my opinion. And I also really don't like when people airbrush themselves or use too much Facetune. I don't know. It's just it's just my just my thought there. Um, that being said, my whole little hook here is sometimes I do like to have uh, fun with the colors. So as you can see, I went and I turned the sky pink. So how I did this is I went to the little blue tab here. And then I just dragged it on over um, on that color scale. So I can make it teal if I want. I can make it, you know, more blue, a more muted blue, or I can make it pink like that. If you wanted to make it brighter, you just have to make the, the blue side brighter like that, or you can make it darker. So I'm going to just kind of leave it right here. Um, that is strictly because this was like this fun Palm Springs desert art installation so I really just wanted to kind of play with the rainbows. I don't usually do that to the sky like for most of the photos. So there we have it. This is looking pretty good. I'm just going to quickly crop it so it fits into an Instagram and there we go. That is how I edit that photo. It's super quick. So now if you're wondering, okay I took 20 shots I really like at the spot. How do I how do I do that? So you're going to go back to your library, you're going to click photo, develop settings, copy settings, boom, and now click on the photos that you want and the same thing, develop settings, paste settings. So now that copied over all the settings that I just did, so it saves me a ton of time in editing. You can even set it so it takes the crop too if you don't even want to worry about cropping. So this one actually looks pretty good. Sometimes I have to go through and make a couple of little edits because the individual photos are different. This is looking pretty good. It might be a little too yellow, so I'm just gonna drop down a little the yellow just a bit and make it a little brighter. But other than that, I think it's pretty good. All right, let's edit another one. It's kind of like the same deal. I'm actually gonna uh, start again with that same preset that I used because that's the one that I use most of the time. Um, but let's say, I would, let's say I didn't want that. So you can kind of like hover over on Lightroom um, and you can kind of see how all of these are going to change. Um, so the other one that I use frequently is this one. It's the 100C plus, and I also use the 400 minus, but neither of them look quite right in this one. So I'm gonna stick to the Porta. There we go. So I look way too pale on this. Everything looks kind of weird and washed out. So we're gonna go kind of the same thing. I'm gonna drop the highlights down on here so the sky kind of comes to life. And I am going to go down here on the oranges and I'm going to add a little bit of saturation and then I'm going to actually drop it down just a little bit. So all of a sudden it looks like I have color on my skin. I really was tan in this photo, just sometimes it doesn't pick up. Um, okay, so looking decent, I'm going to come down here and I am going to put this as like a negative three. For clarity just to kind of add to that like soft little glow I'm gonna bump up the vibrance just a little bit you know I'm thinking the shadows might need a little more help here there we go so overall this is looking okay I don't always uh, touch the temperature and tint here but I'm gonna just play with it real quick to see how I feel about it hmm no so if you ever make a mistake in Lightroom, you can just go control Z. So I'm going to go control Z, control Z. All right, we're back to where it's supposed to be. 
And I'm gonna come down to that, make it just a little bit warm. I'm gonna sharpen that up a bit. And now I'm gonna, I think my face is just like a little too dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of exposure there. Not too much, just a little bit. Kind of brighten my face up a bit there. And I also feel like the swimsuit isn't popping enough, so I'm gonna go back down to the, the um, pink tab here and kind of just add some more saturation there. Because in real life, it's like a bright pink swimsuit and just, it was a foggy day, all the colors were a little bit muted. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. So now when you look at it, the swimsuit pops. I don't look like a pale ghost. It's looking good. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to see what happens with the sky. So this looks a little too natural, but I'm gonna make it a little bit darker because I think it kind of adds to the drama there. I wonder what happens if I mess with the Golden Gate Bridge. No, you can't really see it. Um, so we're looking pretty good there. I think, I think this is pretty good. What do you think? So, yep, I'm gonna crop that just like that. Boom. That looks good. And again, I don't Photoshop myself. I don't airbrush myself. So you can see my cellulite and curves here, but I don't care. I'm putting that up on Instagram anyways. All right. So we have another Golden Gate picture. So I'm actually, because it's this, because it's kind of the same location, it's on the other side of the bridge. I'm going to do that thing real quick where I copy settings and I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to see what it looks like. And you know, it doesn't look too bad. So again, that's what really helps when you stick to your um, same sort of preset is you can kind of copy your settings over to photos even though they're taken at different places or different times. And most of the time you do get something that is like 80% done. So it saves you a bunch of time. So now I'm just gonna hop in here. Um, let me see, I think I want to make this sky a little more saturated. There we go. I'm gonna make it a little more dark blue. And then I think I want to make it a little more orangey and I actually want to pump up the greens. Normally I don't pump the greens, but I really wanted to kind of let nature pop here. Let's see. I'm going to put just a little bit of exposure on myself. So I really pop against there. And then this is a trick I do, um, adding warmth. So I'm going to go over to let me have the brush. Sorry, I did that too quickly. I'm going to go over to the brush. And then I'm going to toggle down to warmer. So this is a really big brush. I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm just going to paint my hair a little bit to bring out my red color a little bit more. And then I think we're good. You know, sometimes I will take that warmer brush and I will kind of paint it over half of the photo, um, you know, to kind of make it feel a little more glowy. I'm not going to do it for this one. Um, let's see. I am going to... I hope I don't even like that. I am going to pump this warm undertone up just a little bit more and then crop it. Boom. So these are all the photos that we just edited. As you can see, they're all basically edited in the same way with some minor differences. All right, so that is it. That is how I edit my photos. It's pretty simple. Um, I think you can recreate it pretty easily. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below, shoot me a DM. I'm more than happy to help you any way that I can. Also, if you are new here, hi, I would love to see you around. So make sure to give me a follow, leave a comment. I'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Welcome to the Whimsy Soul community.